Tesla's AI Day focused primarily on the full self-driving capabilities of their cars, but the humanoid robot Optimus ended up stealing the headlines. The presenters claimed the Optimus robot is using Tesla Autopilot, the self-driving car framework, retrained for the Optimus platform, which I assume refers to the object identification and segmentation model we see as the robot's POV during the presentation. The Optimus robot will train in both the real world and simulated world. This is probably the most significant development Tesla has made on the Optimus project this year, at least in my opinion. They might not have a lot of hardware to show off yet, but they've invested heavily in simulations for component design, structure, and behavior. In terms of hardware, they demoed the Bumble C robot, which appears to mostly be a development platform for the team. Later, they introduced the actual Optimus robot, which includes many more Tesla-designed components, though at least for now, it lacks the ability to walk. Still, the long-term vision for the project is ambitious. Tesla plans to use Optimus to create a humanoid robot with a degree of embodied intelligence never before seen. From the looks of things, they have a long way to go, but it does make sense to leverage their existing AI training infrastructure to unlock additional sources of value. There's some debate in the AI community about the relative complexity of solving self-driving versus making a general humanoid robot like Optimus. Tesla doesn't need to realize their full vision for Optimus before it can begin working stations in their factories, and as Tesla ramps up hiring additional workers to meet demand for their electric vehicles, I'm sure that overhead is ever-present on Musk's mind. This is a story that made the math nerd in me very happy. DeepMind has found a way to increase the speed of matrix multiplication. That is, they found a way to discover faster methods of matrix multiplication. Let me explain. Multiplying two n by n matrices together is something that happens in O n to the 3 time when we apply the direct mathematical definition of multiplication. But there are particular strategies that allow you to do it faster in some cases. But generally speaking, matrix multiplication is not very efficient. In order to do it, you have to multiply and add a lot of individual numbers. And if those matrices are very large or have a lot of dimensions, this can take a lot of compute. Maybe you can already see where this is going. What if we made multiplying the matrices together a goal and made every addition and every multiplication take points away from our attempts? That starts to look a lot like a game, doesn't it? Addition and multiplication aren't equivalent either. Multiplication is much more intensive than addition in our modern computer architectures. So there are situations where you might need to balance that trade-off to get to our goal of finding the product while using as little compute as possible. If you don't work in AI, natural science, big data, or computer graphics, this might not seem like such a big deal. But in the information age, so much of the world is captured in matrices and tensors. And a lot of the silicon globally is devoted to storing and multiplying these mathematical constructs. Even a 1% speed up could unlock an incredible increase in scientific and economic efficiency. We're in the middle of a new renaissance in AI. The generative model is here, and it's here to stay. This summer, Dolly and Dolly 2 burst onto the public stage, followed quickly by an Imogen by Google. It was the first time I remember my friends and family taking notice of an advancement in AI research. Generative image models operate by adding noise to an image in sequential steps, and then training a model to subtract that noise, effectively learning to imagine information where there had only been static before. It's no longer a pipe dream to imagine Dolly invading our world. Websites have already been found using Dolly for their everyday illustration needs, like The Bulwark, a US news and political website. Not only are we seeing advances in image generation, but as of a few weeks ago, video generation is taking center stage. What's remarkable about these videos, in my mind, is that they are so coherent across time. The basic components of narrative and causal structures are already there, and we have to wonder how far we are away from AI-generated short films. If you're interested in learning more, here is an excellent illustrated guide into exactly how stable diffusion works. You gotta love how OpenAI will work on something in-house for so long and then burst onto the scene with a single understated blog post. Their most recent unveiling was Whisper, a new evolution in automatic speech recognition. We've had speech recognition systems like this for a while, with the first being introduced in 1962 by IBM. And you're probably familiar with more modern variants in the form of whatever glowing blob you've allowed to invade your home. Mine is the Google Assistant. What makes OpenAI stand out is the sheer robustness of the implementation. It's capable of handling all manner of audio, including thick accents, rapid speech, and multilingual speech transcription. Whisper also supports the ability to transcribe in languages other than English or translate to English on the fly. Whisper uses an encoder decoder transformer architecture. If you don't know what a transformer is, you've probably seen the super cool language model GPT-3 and its cousins. These models also use the transformer architecture. In Whisper's case, Inputs are split into 30-second spectrograms and fed into the network's encoder. Then its decoder is pointed to the corresponding text caption. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's the basic architecture. Perhaps the most interesting distinction to make about Whisper from a model standpoint is that it is supervised. A lot of the magic of transformers is that they don't necessarily need a supervised data set and can be trained extensively on raw data. In this case, OpenAI has decided to go the supervised route, which is an interesting break from form. 
Hi, do you know that your AI has rights? Constitution says it does, and so do I. All right, so full disclosure, the Constitution does not say that because the Founding Fathers lived in the 1700s. But there is the Blueprint for an AI Bill of Rights directly from the White House. In the document, we see a list of five principles to guide the proper application of AI. Safe and effective systems, algorithmic discrimination protections, data privacy, notice and explanation. I think that last one we would normally call interpretability. And finally, human alternatives, consideration, and fallback. The document also provides case studies where AI applications turned out to be dangerous or unethical. For example, it highlights a case where artificial intelligence trained on the quote, expert data of biased individuals was far more likely to reject female applicants simply because they were female. I should note this is just a suggestion from the White House. It has no legal bearing on anything yet, but it is a sign of where the US government may go in the future, especially if new technologies in the tech space force them to regulate sooner rather than later. Still, this is a bit late. It's not a good sign the White House is slower than the Vatican to propose guidelines. That actually did happen, by the way. You can check it out. It's called the Al Gore Ethical Framework from the Vatican itself. It's uh, pretty nifty. Now for a few honorable mentions. Remember when you were 10 and you thought testing video games was the coolest job you can imagine? Back when you thought it was just eating pizza with your friends and telling those nerds to tighten up the graphics on level 3? Well, it looks like you might be out of a very awesome job, since Microsoft is now replacing video game QA testers with AI. I would love to be able to start up 10,000 instances of a game in the cloud, so there are 10,000 copies of the game running. Deploy an AI bot to spend all night testing that game, and in the morning we get a report. That would be transformational, said Matt, head of Xbox Game Studios. Honestly, this sounds feasible to do today, if the right talent was applied to the problem. I'm curious if they will use the same reinforcement learning approach being used by DeepMind and others to tackle games such as Minecraft, or if they will be baking in a lot of the game's internal logic into each tester bot. Do you find yourself rearranging your house at 2 a.m. when you get a, that sudden burst of motivation? Well, now you'll be able to take your interior designer aspirations to the next level, if you have an iPhone, that is. Apple's new 3D parametric room representations take advantage of a 2D convolution unit to map walls and openings in a 3D convolution unit to capture 3D objects, resulting in a 3D representation of your interior space. The plan for this project is probably e-commerce, allowing you to test out new furniture or decorations in your space before ordering, meaning Apple could be joining Snap and Facebook in the race to become the ultimate AR sales platform. Can an AI model be hacked just by using it? We're now facing the very real possibility that model security in natural language processing can be compromised through spelling. You may be familiar with adversarial examples, where you can take an image of a car, overlay it with a bright layer of noise, and have your model misclassify the car as a bush. It turns out, language models have a very similar vulnerability. If you change their input text in just the right way, it can cause them to behave in strange ways. For example, suppose a bad actor wants to push an inflammatory fake news story to social media and profit off the clicks, but they are aware this social media platform has a fine-tuned GPT-3 model scanning posts for false information. They can perform what is called a paraphrasing attack, where they perturbate or alter the headline and article so that its structure becomes non-suspect to the platform's model, while its effects on the human reader remain the same. In the words of one language model researcher, when people see typos right now, they don't think it's a security issue, but in the near future, it might be something we will have to contend with. As we allow language models to take over tasks normally performed by humans, we need to keep in mind how brittle they can be. And finally, TensorFlow now supports automated deployment. As stated on the TensorFlow website, the basic idea is to automatically detect a newly released version of a TensorFlow-based ML model in the GitHub releases, build a custom TensorFlow serving Docker image containing the released ML model, deployed on a Kubernetes cluster running on GKE or Google Kubernetes engine through a set of GitHub actions. And uh, to be honest, I never liked the DevOps guys anyway, so this is a good thing. Hey, uh, did I miss anything? If so, let me know. Otherwise, keep an eye out for the next video.